Hello, voice humans, and welcome to another episode of your replays. If you want to send me your wrist, put them on my Discord server. Link to that in the description. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we start off with Taco Dude One on the air server in the Crown of Argon. The Vio Colette doesn't really have that much in terms of mobility or DPM, but it has one critical advantage. That is the combination with nine degrees of gun depression and pretty much a absolutely impenetrable turret. And if you haven't seen my autoloader video yet, then you probably know that you just shouldn't do that. Because just playing an auto-loader don't make you good. But this time, we're talking about an auto-reload in the form of the Crown Dog, which means you can choose to either have horrible DPM firing single shots, or you can have horrible shot, horrible DPM firing three shots, and then you reload for about 40 seconds. And the TVP is not really that bright, and the E5 is not really paying attention. That's something very important that I already want to point out here, is that you can't expect your teammates to have a clue of what's going on. Just because you see something, just because you know something is happening, doesn't mean that they know. So you always have to assume that you're the only one that knows what's going on, because otherwise you might be in situations that you could otherwise avoid. Because if you assume that your teammates know something, when in fact they don't, you're going to end up in a very bad position. Just always assume that your teammates know nothing. Essentially, that they're just present and that they barely see what's in front of them. That's a pretty good indication because then you sort of play a bit more careful as well. And in this case, we can clearly see the Kronwagen's damn good strength at playing hull down and not getting pinned through the face. And now we're going to have to reload for a very long time and the T-57 Heavy is um, mad and so is the I-7. This is obviously the NA server, so chat is still active because if this were the EU server and chat was active, you would at this point have about 7,343 Russian chat messages. But here we are. Um, now, in this case, we're going to have to reload for a very, very long time. And you can use that time to reflect about what you've done in your life. Or you think about what's going on in battle. Because you could just sit there and do nothing. Or you could think about what's happening. Which is obviously the recommended thing. Because if you just sit there and do nothing, well, nothing's gonna happen. And you're reloading anyway, so you might as well think about what's going around you. Attacker's doing this really well, like just aiming at the I-7, but casually checking if the Leopard's peeking, because if the Leopard's peeking, he can obviously shoot the Kronwagen into the side of the turret. And the I-7's doing this pretty well here, uh, of concealing any part of his armor that would be penable. Now, it's a 4v4, which is, never mind, a 4v3 for the enemy team. And now the I-7 just parks himself out in the open and gets himself wrecked. Now, this is not really a thing I'm, I'm a big fan of this move because it gets you down to 200 HP, which is not very helpful. And ideally, in a situation like this, you don't want to do that. Like, if you're in a, let's say, 7v3 or you're in a completely pointless situation, then you can start throwing away hit points. But if you're in a situation like this, then you have to pretty much do everything you can to preserve your hit points because if you're in a one-shot now it's a lot harder to get anything done. And if you are a one-shot and you play like that, then obviously it's not going to go really well. 3v2. A Leopard and a 268. The Leopard is in a horrible position, which completely robs him of its main advantage. That is his excellent mobility. And he's just sitting there. And he's not getting out. Now, at this point, what the Leopard should have been done... A long time ago is just get as out of there as quickly as possible he's gonna take a couple of shots but he'd be gone now in this case there's nothing he can do he's got an e5 on one side he's got the kronwagen bearing down on him nothing he can do full shot full hp down to zero just like that think people it's that and it's, it's that easy if you're in a situation where you're gonna lose you have nothing to lose because you're losing so get out if you can because you either because you have nothing to lose you either sit there die get wrecked or you try to get out you try to reposition you maybe get to a better spot you can play better from there you've literally got nothing to lose if you're in a situation like that. please just go for it and now the 268 i don't quite know what he's trying to achieve by going out in the open hiding behind the rock over there but i suppose if your goal was to achieve nothing then that's what it did. Now, I wouldn't pay much attention to the chat, really, but it is quite hilarious, so... Yeah. 4.6k. Uh, 5.6k. Ooh. In a Kronwagen. It's not even an ace. But it's impressive nonetheless. So please think when you play this game. 
Now, speaking of thinking, that hasn't been done when this vehicle was put originally into World of Tanks PC. Because this thing used to be the tier 10 heavy tank in World of Tanks PC. How is it a tier 9 tank destroyer that has 2,700 DPM, 640 alpha damage? Pretty damn good penetration, sort of. And uh, not great accuracy, but 10 degrees of gun depression and excellent turret armor and mobility that's about fine-ish enough. How did that happen? Well, basically what happened is that this was the tier 10 heavy tank and the T-34 was the tier 9 heavy tank. But Wargaming was like, nah, we don't like that. So instead, they made the M-103 and the T-125, uh, the tier 9 and tier 10, and then they downgraded this vehicle to tier 9 tank destroyer and downgraded the T-34 to tier 8 premium tank. Now, in Blitz, that obviously never happened. In Blitz, it just instantly got introduced as a T9 tank destroyer, along with the T10, the E4. The E4 got buffed recently, making this thing somewhat decent of a grind again. Now, previously, you have the T28 prototype, which is about as fun as a urinary tract infection. So I highly wouldn't recommend that. And if you have 3 XP to skip it, absolutely do so. But the T30 is quite lovely can be worth picking up especially if you are looking to have some fun because while it not, pretends to be a tank destroyer it's a heavy tank it's just pure and simple it's a high alpha damage incredible turret armor not that quick heavy tank if you're into that kind of stuff then i absolutely recommend going for it now the e4 kind of breaks with that because it doesn't really have that much turret armor given its horrible machine gun cupola on top and only has six degrees of gun depression, which this thing has 10. So, I don't know if it's worth, I mean, the E4 was a lot better than it was, but still not great. Now what we have here, 514 hit points. One thing to keep in mind, who can one shot? Who can one shot the vehicle right now? And that's the only the WT if he is using the derp gun. And that's the most difficult target here. Because if you know, 1vx situation or well in this case just a regular 3v3 that the cup star is finding himself in i have no idea what the wt is doing then you want to do it as follows you take out the most dangerous target first or if it's the easiest as well if it's not the easiest then you take out the easiest first ideally you always want the most dangerous but if you have an easier target you take that first then if you have taken out the easiest target you take the most dangerous target if it wasn't already the easiest and after that, you deal with everything else. Ideally, always engaging one on one. That's exactly what's happening here, right? They aren't playing together. They're not attacking from multiple sides. They're just one there, one there, one there. And that is exactly what you want in a 1vx situation like this. You want them on different sides. You always want a 1v1 v1. And that is exactly what happened here. The object doesn't think, just peeks around the corner. And we have a beautiful game right there. That is well played. Thank you very much for sending in your replays, and thank you very much for watching this video. And see you in the next one. Nice color box. Goodbye.